Um, and I can tell you because I've got a list. Oh, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the official rundown of who's in it <laughs> is um, Joe Flanagan, of course, talking about John Shepherd, mm -hmm. first Stargate Atlantis. Um, Kate Mulgrew, talking about being the um, first female commander. Um, ben Browder, talking about John Crichton and, of course, Cameron Mitchell. So it's really interesting. So he's uh, 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 there's a whole section on Farscape and Crichton's journey, wow. and then another section obviously on Stargate SG One and right. Big Mitchell and and taking over the sort of reins, if you like, from um, <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson. Um, there's um, Jonathan Frakes, uh, Will yeah. Riker, Star Trek Next Generation. Um, uh, Tori Higginson, Dr. Elizabeth Weir That's exciting. from Stargate Atlantis, because obviously she played opposite Joe, so it's a really lovely right. mix to have, to have them both. And also I love that she was in charge of the expedition, but she wasn't military, mm -hmm. and she wasn't a man, but she was this kind of great diplomat and this great intellect. Um, and then there's the Borg Queen, Alice Creech. Mm -hmm. The Borg, because obviously the Borg Queen was played by two different actresses. But Alice Creech played the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact and also in the finale of Voyager. So she was the first Borg Queen and then another American actress played her in some, I think, some early bits of Voyager where um, uh, uh, Alice couldn't do them because she was otherwise committed. So Alice Creech, and I love the fact that she was, you know, the ultimate evil in the universe, <laughs> was also a woman. And then you've got Janeway on the other side, the yeah. first kind of female captain is quite balanced. Then... Um, uh, David Hewlett as Rodney McKay, right. again Great from character. Atlantis, of course. Yeah. Christopher yes. Judge, Tilk, you know, mm -hmm. Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Um, and uh, Claudia Black, again, it's really interesting because, of course, she worked with Ben Browder in both Farscape and SG-1. So right. she talks about being Aaron Sun, the peacekeeper, and also uh, Balaman Duran, the crazy, whacked-out alien girl. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Gates McFadden, Dr. Beverly Crusher from Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, okay. Which is really exciting. I love her character, you know, the kind of the female, you know, kind of chief medical officer on the on the on the Enterprise. And of course she followed McCoy. So that was a really interesting flip that they should turn McCoy into Crusher. Mm -hmm. And um, David Nickel. You know Zelenka from Atlantis, yes. it was a real surprise, he's so good. <laughs> really good, you know, like really brilliant. And then Eddie, of course, um, uh, because of Pete Latimer, and Nathan as Captain Mal Reynolds. Right. So that concludes the draw, that's who's actually in it. Wow. And the reason <laughs> choosing them is because what I was interested in is the conversation, of course, rather than the individual performances, it was the, the mm -hmm. whole blended conversation. So what I wanted to do was talk to people who play characters which which in themselves had a very particular area of interest, which when you blended them together, you would get a really great conversation. Right. And it's really interesting because um, when, when we interviewed um, Jonathan Frakes, he said, are you going to interview um, Patrick Stewart, you know, as Jean-Luc Picard? And, um, and I said, well, no, because I'm more interested in you played the man who was never a commander, you know, who kind of mm -hmm. was always the number one, which is a strange, sort of modest, wonderful, reasonable, and is it a very wise thing that you don't need to be in charge? You know, you don't have to have the title. You know, a lot of, we might not know, but a lot of Next Generation had him mm -hmm. thinking about leaving the Enterprise to get his own ship, and then realising that home and his happiness was in the Enterprise, that he'd found his place. So I said to him, that's more interesting than than just Jean-Luc Picard, who's great, but he's just in charge and bold, and but that, there's not a great deal of complexity there. And, of course, Kate Mulgrew was brilliant because she was the, the, the only woman. She was right. the... The one I would like to do, but I ran out of time, was mm. Avery Brooks, because obviously he was the black captain, you know, the black commander. And so, in a mm. sense, he's got a lot of... He's like a cousin of Kate Mulgrew because... Obviously, she's the, she's the girl, he's the black man, and, and that would have been interesting, but I've run out of time. Mm -hmm. And so it was always to try and find characters that, that weren't necessarily obvious, 
because you know, obviously if you were just doing the obvious ones you'd go we want Kirk and Spark yeah. and then we want Zachary Quinto and Chris Pine <laughs> um, and, that. and that'd be great of course it'd be really exciting but it wouldn't be the thoughtful thing I'm trying to make you know right. And the sort of slightly idiosyncratic, thoughtful thing, which is why David Nichol was thrilling as Zelenka, because he's quite a small character, really. You know, he was only a guest for a while on Atlantis, and mm -hmm. it wasn't until later on that he sort of became a featured character. But he was so wonderful. You know, just really, his character was always so wonderful and strange, and he was brilliant. And added this, this very particular cultish layer and obviously, to an extent, like Mal Malcolm Reynolds is, is the ultimate odd cult character because he only got 14 episodes and then was, well, obviously in the movie, but so it's like almost like the odd people, the slightly mm -hmm. the curious characters what I was looking for. And especially things like, you know, Beverly Crusher, the Doctor, um, because of her relationship with McCoy, you know, he was such a basically a sexist pig, you know, he was a chauvinist, you know, and, 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 and like a lot of medical people at that time, and she came in as this completely gentle, thoughtful, you know, the, almost like the pole opposite of him. And also, of course, she could tell Picard, no, he can't do things, you know, that, that she could actually relieve him of duty. So that's a really interesting dynamic too. So does that, does that help? Yes, that <laughs> I feel a little overwhelmed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a huge I, I lineup. <laughs>